Today we're making the Grail Cup from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It's the right height, it's the right weight, it's the right width, and here you've got the right colors and you can dirty it up if you so desire. Why pay 40, 50, 100 dollars when you can make one of your very own? I'll show you how to do it all for about 5 to 15 dollars depending on what supplies you have. Interested? Here we go. The inside of the grail cup is pretty easy. One quarter inch plywood, just happens to be beach. I have a three and a half inch long, one inch PVC pipe. I have a two and a half inch scrap piece of PVC pipe that's gonna slide into here. And that will come in and rest about there. And it's all about holding this three quarter inch dowel in place. And you can see there's a little bit of looseness there. And so I'm gonna build that up with some tape evenly around to keep that in the center and then that will allow me to tie in the top of the grail cup to the base. Now I'm going to go outside and get all the dirty stuff done. When I'm dealing with messy things I like to come outside cut this off. So originally this is what it started like and all this texture was going to be a problem. The texture in the inside was going to be a problem. I actually used a heat gun and melted that all down and it worked well. You just can't touch it while it's going on. You can see where the texture is here and then shaped it down. You can do it with any kind of sander. I have this sander here that I use, but you can use just a sponge sander. I did a lot of the finish work I did with a sponge sander. And you can see I've got a band-aid on my finger. And why is that? Because I didn't use gloves. If you're using belt sander, I highly recommend using gloves. The leather gloves will take the cut and your skin won't. From now on, I'm using leather gloves when I'm using this belt sander. I do all this messy work outside just because it just makes it easier to clean up. I don't like breathing all that stuff in. So you can see there's a bit of an edge and there was over here and I'm just going to sand that down with the belt sander or you can use a file. You want to get all this texture out of there, make it more rustic. The painting is going to be really interesting because there's so many different color variations and, and dark lighting schemes as what was used in the movie. You don't always get a good look at what the actual colors are. There's a lot of things on the internet that think that they got it right, so I'm gonna do a combination and do the best I can. But obviously the gold on the inside is the key. Some color, parched, splotchy color, aged color on the outside. You can use any kind of spacer combination, three quarter inch gray pipe, and then I have this dial, put some tape on there as a spacer. You wanna have it right in the center to build this up so that you have something to attach it to at the top and the bottom for strength before you add the clay. To make the base, I used a two and a half inch hole saw and cut through the quarter inch plywood. And then this will be the base and that will screw into the top and the bottom like this to give it strength before I build it up with clay. Tried to make this as even as possible by using the grinder and then taking a sponge and just kind of hit the edge off and I also took and put a little bit of a groove here so it comes flush. Now that the screw hole is good I'm going to put in some glue just to help bond the two pieces together. I'm using rapid fuse. Doesn't need a lot. Match the hole. I've already screwed it in once so that I know it's tight and flush and that glue will set and give me just a super bond. Now on this side I want it to be flush. I don't want to have to fill that in too much, so I'm using the nail. So I'm going to get it started with a small hammer. Hopefully it's going to go poo-foo. Maybe not. As far as I can with the hammer, then with the punch to give it a little bit of an extension. Trying to take the camera. I've gotten pretty flush. I can rotate this. Now that I have the foundation for the cup, I need to fill this in. It has more of a U shape. Build that out to the edge, and then have a little slope. The prop is approximately four and a half inches across and that's about what this is here and it's about six inches tall and that's about what it is here so size wise it's pretty good i just have to get this piece nailed down and that's going to take a little bit of work i've given this some thought and i think i'm going to start building it up a little bit with glue and then coat it at the end with the epoxy like in this so far building up you can always heat it up for some reason if you can get it right Checking in with a little bit of progress. I kind of like the way this handle is down here. And blue marker is an area that I'm going to build up. Online you can see a ton of different pictures of what the grail looks like. Some of them are really bowed out. But I think the general consensus of the actual prop, it was built up a little bit more. So I'm using Pro Strength Maximum Glue Formula. It's really solid and it's going to be great for putting the epoxy on. Build this up little by little. 
just slowly go around and use the line as a guide. Not cushion a whole lot out at a time. Okay, so that's all the way around. Go up here. You get the idea. I've added more glue. It's really kind of built it up a good bit. Might fill in some of the little nooks and crannies. Otherwise, it's time for epoxy. The next step is epoxy. It comes in two parts, A and B, and I use two separate spoons, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I've used this with great success on all sorts of builds. This is one of my more recent ones, my Harry Potter wand that you can open up champagne bottles with. I'll post below the video for how I made this. You can see a lot of the details that between the paint and the texturing, that's the key. You can also use other clays that you can bake, but epoxy doesn't require you to bake it. And it is literally hard as a rock. So I'm gonna do A first, kind of looks like clay. 1.1 ounces. You can always make more, Vert that over. 31 grams. Go over here and do the B part, scoop it out. 1.2 ounces. There you go. 31 grams. Gram, I was told one time, is about the weight of a paper clip. So then you put these together and you just kind of mix them. This off to the side. And you can see I put paper down and I've got this portable lightweight cutting board that I work off of for this. Knead it together until it's one consistency. Very sticky tacky stuff. It will soften up and almost be too soft at the beginning. After it's all mixed together, I'm going to let it rest for five minutes. Epoxy is good, but not cheap. It's about $23 for this two-piece thing here. Basically a pound of epoxy. It really does stick to almost anything, and it is moldable, and then it starts hardening up right around an hour. So although it says here, working time is upwards to three hours, but I found that, at least in my environment, one hour, you better start getting serious about putting it in place. So take a little piece off. Roll it into a snake, noodle, whatever you want to say. And start up here, right on that line. Roll it down, blend it in. So I'm going to work my way down. I'll show you as I get a little bit further down the process. You can see how it's building out the cup nicely. Then I put a little bit in here to conceal the nail. Just work it in like this. So you can see that's filling out the bowl. Made major progress on the bowl, the general sense of it. As far as positioning the clay, it's pretty much all where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna start down here and move up that way and then work on this transition piece. I thought the grail cup was made out of wood, but if you listen to Indy in the movie, he said the cup of a carpenter. He doesn't say that it's wood. To turn this bowl in the Middle East, I think because it's so small, it would have been very challenging carving it out. To make it out of clay would have made it a lot more practical and probably is what it actually was. So we're gonna start here, then move down this way with this amount of clay and then see if we need any more. You know, this kind of looks like rough clay, but I don't want it to look like wood. So I may just put a real thin layer of clay there. Just push it in place. It really is easy to use, has great results. As I use it more and more, I just become more convinced that it's a great product. I think the resta is the guy that introduced me to this epoxy clay. I was watching his video one time, gave it some high marks, so I figured to give it a shot. The rest is rock solid maker, and he certainly knows his stuff. I have a bit of a quandary here. I've got this done, I've got this done. I'd love to smooth that out a little bit, finish this. I've got a bulk of the clay in place. I want to put some thin strip in there and make sure I have enough. So I'm going to make about 15 grams of each, the A and the B, and hopefully that will be enough to cover this without a lot of waste left over. Total of 92 grams. And you can see I've been using it for several projects. I've still got about half left. Trying something new on this project because it's so big. It says it takes a little bit of water, does that little finer detail, smooths all the lines in place. I'm really liking how that works. It's the next day and this is rock hard. This little blue line, by the way, was a marker I used to make sure that I went equally distance around. It wasn't just overlapping. It has the heft with all the weight in there. The next challenge is going to be painting. I think I'm gonna start with a cinnamon satin I want it to be kind of flat. And then I'm going to use rub and buff for the gold. This is actually gold leaf rub and buff. I've used rub and buff on some of my projects before. Here's a Nerf gun I redid, and that really gave it a nice metallic shine. That's the silver rub and buff. 
and just base paint the whole inside and everything. And then on a lot of the models, it's red. And it just doesn't make any sense unless it was a festive color that they would paint for back in the art ages. So I'm probably gonna do a combination of red and burnt sienna to kind of give it some layered look and hopefully get close to the grail cup. Note to self. There's not much left in the can. It's probably not worth starting your project with. Splattered everywhere. So here we go. Trying again. Wow, that's pretty cinnamony. Let it dry and shoot it again. After watching the video again and again and again and looking online, I'm pretty much convinced that there's a couple key colors to this. The inside of the cup has to be gold. And then close as I can get, a little bit of burnt sienna and Tuscan red. In the movie, you know, it's been sitting on that shelf for gosh knows how long, hundreds of years. And so it had kind of this gray patina on it or gray dirt or whatever. And I noticed when Indy got the cup wet, it kind of faded a little bit. Half inch brush and a three quarter inch brush. I'm gonna start with the red inside the cup first because then it will dry and then I'll be able to put in the gold leaf. Here we go with Tuscan Red. That will go a long way. I'm gonna use the bigger brush for this because red is a predominant color. And this is gonna be a layered approach. I looked online, I can't see anybody else making a grail cup. I find that a little surprising. And then it just kind of makes me interested in making shakara stones and maybe the cross. So I'm gonna just kind of plotch it in here. This is an opportunity to use my little turnstile here. I made this out of skateboard wheel and it'll be perfect for this kind of thing where I've got to turn and paint. That's two layers of color. I'm kind of going on a couple pictures that I've taken from various locations and I'm not going to show them on the video because I'm concerned about copyright and I want to be respectful. So on with some brown. And I'm going to leave the inside of the cup alone. I'm just going to highlight the outside. That's a little lighter. It's maybe too light. So what I think I might do is go with a burnt umber. The other thing that's interesting is because this was all shot in dark and it never got out of the cave where the grail was, it's really hard to get the colors and figure it out watching the video. Trust me, I watched the video and I watched the video. Trying to give some depth. If you think about what we're doing here, this is an artifact and we're trying to make it look 2,000 years old. I've added another light because it was really hard to see the colors. So now we're going to put in some burnt umber. You see some of that umber got a little too umberish. I over burnt sienna and like aging or coloring or anything, you, you got to be careful that you don't overdo it. So I think the splotching is helping. Just put some in place and then I just take the paper towel and just kind of staying away from the bowl. At this point, I'm going to leave that red, knocking down a little bit of the burnt sienna. Eventually, this thing kind of looks like a 70s art project. So I think the color's right. It's just a matter of getting the detail and splotchiness. Having a turn style like this that you're working with really kind of helps you speed through the project and just kind of look at the whole thing. Go back in with the Tuscan Red. Hit it with that a little bit and then kind of knock down some of this. And well, I think we'll splotch with that too. At this point, this light really helps. Taking it down a little bit at a time. Dry brushing so you don't have as much paint going on. The base letter of cinnamon and then now you're in about four deep. You could have started with a black base coat instead of the cinnamon but I think what would happen is it could have darkened everything up. But when I was working on my wands or even the lights every it's details the layer upon layer upon layer that really makes the difference. Painted the top and the bottom. I'm going to use the gold leaf rub and buff on this kind of thing so I can hang it back up on the wall is I cut around here and I carefully take it out and then I just finish off the job. Make a hole with the top. Okay, so gold leaf and I'm going to do the rim and the inside. You don't have to wear gloves, but I just wear gloves because the last thing I want to do is go to work the next day and have golden fingers. Kind of hard to explain to people. Really doesn't take much at all. So we're going to go in there and <laughs> ah, look at that. That's exactly what I want. Now, since this is kind of uh, almost a chalky paint, you might have to use more than you usually would. If there's a little red showing. I'm not caring about that. That's the aging process. Some of this might be getting absorbed. But this is the key to the build right here, is the cup has to be gold. Depending on where you look, the rim is gold or it's not. You might have to do this twice, and it doesn't have to be perfect. 
Because remember, it's thousands of years old. You know, you could try gold paint. I don't think you're going to get this kind of look. There it is, finished on the inside. I might buff it a little bit. I kind of like how a little bit of the red showing, because if you would imagine, back in the day, this would have been gold leaf, and it would have deteriorated over time. This is all turning out. Now i got to do the sides. And all that's going to be is just a couple splotches here and there. Doesn't need to be much. Then I'll age them out. And you're just kind of going with it. You don't want to put it on too heavy. It'd be interesting to see how they actually made the original prop. Not a lot of information on it. Yeah. Really kind of want to age it out a little bit with this granite gray. But we'll see how it goes. Right now, I'm kind of liking it. So I'm going to let it dry off a little bit and then maybe buff it up a little and see how it works. Now we have entered the buffing portion of our program. And I'm just taking a old t-shirt, 100% cotton t-shirt, and I'm just going in there and shining it up a little bit. Then I'll show it to the family and see what they think. My best and toughest critics. You could buy one of these for anywhere from $50 to $100, but it's fun to make it on your own. I've always wanted to have a prop of a treasure that he has. Now, obviously, he would have never taken it out of the cave based on the movie, but it's just nice to have anyway. It's a little too fresh on this gold on the outside, so I'm going to take a real cheap short brush like this. This is one of those that you can get 20 for a buck. I'm just going to kind of go over the gold splashes and rub them out just to give it a little bit less of a new shine. Pin it down just enough. In the spirit of this prop, it was probably all covered in gold originally and it just kind of wore off. I may end up regretting this, but I've looked at the video again. There is this subtle gray dustiness that's on the grail. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint half the grail with this granite gray. I'm going to put some of the paint in here, hit it with some water and vinegar, not a lot, and this will thin it out. I'm gonna rub it around here and then see how it looks. I wanna just do half of it. Marked my territory and I'm just gonna that's too thick there. I'm gonna have to knock it down some more. You may want to totally forego this step. And it's gotta come out uniform. Lightly brushing the cup. I don't wanna do the whole thing because I wanna give you guys a opportunity to tell me whether you like it this way or the other way. <laughs> and it's gotta be uniform and that's the challenge. And I'm just going to wipe most of it off. I'm going to hit that with a wet paper towel, bring it down even further. Just taking some straight water from a spray bottle. Gotten this paper towel damp. Lighten up on the gray. Come off. Come off. There you go. Put too much on there, it's just going to look goofy. And it will ruin all your good work. That needs a little more touch up. And then just knock it pretty much all down. You can see I'm also rubbing off some of the other paint in the process and you know Indy got the cup wet so some of the gray came off and this is just hundreds of years worth of dust it's kind of what it's supposed to be vote below in the comments whether you like the cleaner version of the 2000 year old grail cup or the more dirty representative of the movie cup I appreciate your comments if you like this I'll make it all that way if you like this, I have no idea. I'll have to go back and clean it all up by painting over it like this. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. And thanks for subscribing below. I'm going to make more movie props coming soon. Star Wars, Indiana Jones. And I'll also take suggestions. Post your comments below.